we are going to play some Independence War. It's my favorite game of all time. Um, I've been playing it for forever since like, I don't know, 6th grade, 5th grade, long time ago. We're not going to watch the intro video because it's like 15 minutes long and it's already elsewhere on the internet, so go watch it somewhere else. There we go. Maybe? Come on. Frickin' work, please. Yay. Oh my god. Stop being a jerk. Hey, look at that. Alright, well, we're going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to play from the beginning. I'm going to actually skip the advanced navigation training because it's really boring, but the basic is pretty fun um, and very short. It's only like two minutes. So here we go. Let's fly a spaceship. <coughs> This is a training exam in piloting Dreadnought class corvettes. All prospective officers should pass this exam before entering active service. Your performance will be monitored and scored. The exam will test your ability to control the ship. You will be maneuvering using thrusters only. On screen is a Type 2 navigation buoy. We call them rings. Your objective is to fly the ship along a course made up from a series of such rings. To complete the course, you must fly through the center of each and every ring in turn. Colliding with the ring will result in damage to your vessel. Yes, it will. The total time taken to complete the course will be measured, and the faster you complete it, the more you will score. You may resit this exam at any time in order to improve your score. All right, well, here we go. Okay, the objective of this exam is to pass through the center of all the rings in the course in the shortest possible time. The timer starts when you pass through the first one. Any questions? Nope. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to go. Okay, the timer is running. In case anybody cares, I'm using a um, Thrustmaster T16000M. It's a very nice uh, joystick that I picked up a couple days ago. I never really had a nice joystick before, so this is a nice change. I get to play this with uh, some really old hardware. The Gravis, um, I don't remember which models I had, I had two different ones. You'll know, maybe, you'll know, I don't know, that I'm using a lot of lateral thrusters, and that's because I'm doing this in free flight mode. That's so, halfway. Newtonian physics kind of really matter in free flight mode. In assisted flight mode, it will uh, act like an airplane, sort of. I'll fly around like a little fighter jet. It's fun, but as I said, I've been playing this for over a decade. Oh god, <sighs> that was close.
But yeah, so I've been playing this for over a decade, so I really would like uh, I like it with a little bit more challenge. And freedom, because this is a lot more fun. Not gonna set any records for this course run. I'm just taking it easy. Oh boy. Oh boy, uh, I made a mistake. Should have lined up before I started thrusting at full speed. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. You oh, I made it. it. Whew. Good time, too. Yeah, thanks, condescending jerk. <laughs> I didn't beat my best time, but whatever. <laughs> oh, you did it. Good time too. Yeah. Thanks. Ra ra. Okay. So yeah. Um. My ba my best time on that. My previous time that you just witnessed was two minutes fifty four seconds. Best time two forty six. You know, good fun. Let's go start the story now. You get to meet the ship. Lieutenant. You will have realized by now the value the Commonwealth places on the fleet. The latest Navy plan is to increase the size of the fleet by 10% this year. Our records suggest that there are a number of promising salvage candidates in the debris field left over from the battle for the Ptolemon Exchange. The debris field is protected by a number of mine devices. These have been alerted to your presence and temporarily deactivated. You and your crew will enter the debris field in a standard command section subvessel. It should be compatible with most vessel classes in the debris field. You should attempt a salvage operation on the most intact hulk you encounter. Mm. So I'm looking for something green, huh? A flatbed tug will transport the command vessel to the vicinity of the debris field. To secure against the prospect of indie looting, the debris field is protected by hunter-seeker mines. These will be alerted to your presence and deactivated. The fact that you mentioned it twice gives me great The comfort. tug will release the command section and wait outside the debris field. You should then pilot the vessel into the field and start the search for any salvageable vessel candidates. You should investigate any large debris items which might be ships. Our scans reveal several promising hulks within the field which seem to be intact. I really like that word. If you find a salvageable ship, dock the command section onto the vessel and pilot the ship back out of the field to rendezvous with the flatbed. Or rendezvous You'll with have flatbed. some time to kill before the tug gets you near the debris field, so I suggest you use that time wisely in familiarizing yourself with the command section controls. Mm-hmm. Nope. Cutscene. Oh well, yeah, I'm gonna be letting all the cutscenes play. Because, you know, nostalgia. Or something. Commercial tug ship C-4 
ATO 348 to command section 32098. I have halted the ship pending confirmation of our orders. We should be on our way in just a few moments. We should be at the drop off point in about five minutes. I'll check this out. I'm going to turn the HUD on and off. What? I just learned about that yesterday. I have had this game since like sixth grade, like I said, and I didn't notice until yesterday that I could do that. That's actually not listed in the uh, controls, I don't think. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong? I just, I don't know. Well, let's see. So anyway, he says it's going to take five minutes to get there. I am not that patient. We were undocking. And going ahead at full speed on our own. We are entering the debris field now. Logging many debris items. Shoot. Dang it, I overshot it again. I did this yesterday too. <laughs> Turned right through the field because I went too fast. Forgot how bad things are at slowing down in space. That Corvette looks promising. Alright, so here's our ship that we're going to be salvaging. You're going to tell me how to do it in a second. Uh, I'll tell you how to do it. I press shift R. The Marcus were taking way too fast to dock with. We need to stop the rotation. The remote into I suggest we try remote log on. Make the dreadnought your nav target, then press REM on the command console. There we go. I'm not going to press REM, I'm going to switch back to the pilot seat and press shift R, which is the same thing. And now we're going to stop the ship from flipping end over end here. We are currently remote controlling the uh, body of the spaceship that we are attempting to salvage at the moment. Can give it a little bit of lineup, make it easier for us to dock. All right, let's move on in. And uh, mentioned this yesterday too, but I'm gonna say it again. I like to do everything uh, manually. So I could autopilot dock, but instead I'm gonna do it manually. I'll line up first though. There we go. That's good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect because the game has a fair amount of uh, leeway in this sort of thing. Not a perfect simulation. It's nice to make something. Also, Docking complete. We have a green oh, light on the cables, on the airlock, and the pass-throughs. Looks like we have ourselves a starship. Yes, Burn, what state is she in? Let's get out of here before the mines come. Considering she's been five years in the freezer, not bad. The accommodation units are missing, and the main tank is holed. But the reserve is still okay. Oh look! The mines that they said weren't going to attack me twice. Oh, Sir, don't worry, the mines are deactivated. It's all good. Alright, let's uh, shoot them. I'm 
getting a signal from within the ship. What kind of signal? It's coming across on the crew intercom video link. Here, I'll, I'll patch you in. Would you dig up my grave? I beg your pardon? I said, would you dig up my grave? Of course not. So I gather you don't approve of being disrespectful of the dead? No. Why? Because of this. Me. Being here now. Being here dead. That's why. I was killed. I am dead. But would they let me rest in peace? Would they? Oh no! They would not let me be. Some son of a bitch recovered the Hulk of the Dreadnought and pulled out this sorry digital facsimile of my mind. An unholy capture of my last thoughts taken without consent during my final glorious medal winning battle. And then they drag me kicking and screaming back into service. I'll tell you, this is one odd Navy boy. You don't get time off even for being dead. Listen, if it helps at all, I didn't ask for some kind of digital command assistant. Digital assist, digital assistant, that's me. Get your untrained crew out there into darkest space, and if they drift into a bit of trouble, wander off the edge of their limited simulator academy safe territory into trouble, then the crew can drop their milk and cookies, press a few buttons, and the captain of matter pops out the answer. Well, I don't think so. So you're not going to help? Did I say that? No. Only I am going to play it like a computer. Stupid dumbass questions in, stupid smartass sarcastic remarks out. Now if you ever manage to ask me a question which doesn't insult my experience and intelligence, I dare say I'll force a civil answer out of myself. That is the saddest looking piece of junk I have ever seen. Pays over and out. Yay, the end. Okay, wait. Alright, awesome, I got it. Perfect score. When you join the Navy, you expect to serve on a ship. We were sent out to find a ship. What we found was the Dreadnought, first in her class and the last ship of Jefferson Clay. When the ship was refitted, my CO was impressed enough to let me try out for command. All right. Well, Next, we're going to go on a routine patrol. Or are we not? There we go. Hmm. This is your first stint as acting captain, so we expect your finest efforts. That's her way of saying, it's okay if you say I know we have you to thank for salvaging this ship, but treat her with respect. This is an easy mission, so don't expect to see any action on your first watch. The Indies have been threatening to commit acts of terrorism where it will have the greatest effect in our own backyard. So the Brass are asking for frequent security patrols of sensitive sites within the solar system. I'll patrol you your senses. Your mission is to fly as a wing to the Corvette Tripoli on the Dawn Watch. You should follow the Tripoli's lead and stay close to her at all times. The Tripoli is being piloted by someone you know. Your old academy instructor pilot, Ben Abrahams. So, I guess they drafted him again. Stick close to Ben and you'll do fine. All right. This is Salt Lake Navy Base Space Traffic Control to CNV 301 Dreadnought. We have you guys docked on Pier 5. Dreadnought, you are clear for departure. Look, there's the Tripoli. This is the Tripoli calling the Dreadnought. Dreadnought, meet you at the rendezvous waypoint. All right, for this mission, I'm mostly going to use uh, autopilots because Flying very long distances through space is difficult without them. 
hard to be accurate. When I'm maneuvering, I'll do it manually. But when I'm just going places... We're going into LDS. LDS stands for Linear Displacement System for those techno, techno babble inclined. Um, it's basically a warp drive, compresses space in front of the ship, expands it behind. The shield systems in this game also run off of the same air quotes technology here. Um, non existent technology. I'll explain more as it becomes relevant. Anybody on the channel, if you want me to explain it, then say so and I'll keep talking. This is the Commonwealth Navy vessel Dreadnought. We have docked with your ship. Please evacuate all personnel. Sir, all five crew are aboard. And, and the transport looks ready to blow. All right, let's undock. Okay, and fireworks. Let's see what Alright, let's go to the EC drone. That stands for Environmental Control Drone for you techno babble and climb. There 
the big egg. Approaching environmental control drone 3. Hey, they shouldn't be there. Looks like two indie ships. Hey, they're firing. Oops. The Tripoli is down. One bogey moving to attack, second bogey making a run for it. Let's engage this guy here. If we're quick enough, we can catch the other bogey before it takes us to the brain. Why is my gun not hitting? It's supposed to auto like, gimbal and stuff. Thank you. That's one bogey down. Uh, let's, let's keep going. No grouchy. For some reason my cannon did not lock onto that other ship. Piss me off. Hopefully if I remember correctly there's another ship here waiting for this guy, so he so should at least get his uh just desserts. Yep, there they go, launching ships. I did try to dock with him before we left, but it wouldn't let me, so obviously I'm not allowed to. I wondered uh, yesterday when I played this if I would be able to save him by like docking with him or something, but now I'm not allowed to save him. He has to die for the story. That's dedication right there. and I can't use any autopilots on him. Yeah, that's weird.
Oh wait, no. My autopilot is engaged, it just didn't notify me. Weird. Hmm. Anyway, let's get closer. See if I can duck with him. Module's gone. That sucks. All right. Well, I want to see something here. Oh, it won't let me inject the command section either. <sighs> Dang. They thought of everything. Apparently, they knew that I would try to steal that ship. Uh, let's go. Oh god! That was awkward. Wow. I just crashed into the environmental control drone. In case you didn't see that. I got a perfect score on the mission. First time I've ever gotten 100%. Normally I get like 90 something because some other ship deals the majority of the damage to that second indie, but. Ugh. That's so frustrating. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, see, 95%. Look at that. Oh my god. So grouchy. Alright, well anyway, like I said, Nav Advanced is kind of boring. You just follow a guy in a tour of the solar system. I mean, it's nice to look at, but it's boring. So, let's go play this mission. Gatekeeper. It's really hard, or at least was really hard when I was younger. I think I played it a couple years ago and it wasn't as bad as I remember. But One I'd... of our outposts is suffering at the hands of indie hostiles, who attack after jumping in at the nearby Lagrange Point. We need to reinforce the defense of the outpost, so we are installing one of these. It is, in effect, an artificial asteroid, and it is unmanned. The Gunstar is fitted with multiple automatic cannon. These high-power cannon fire two gigawatt particle beam bursts at rapid discharge rates. We use Gunstars to surround a Lagrange point. The firepower is great enough to take out any unwanted incoming ships. Frankly, they are a much more cost-effective way of protecting a Lagrange point than keeping a ship on permanent patrol. A team of engineers is installing a cluster of four gun stars surrounding the problem Lagrange point in the Ross 128 system. While they are offline, the gun stars are vulnerable to attack. Your mission is to oversee the final installation and activation of these units. You will then assist the engineers in the final installation and live tests. The engineers will need to dock and commission each gun star before they will activate. You must defend the location from any attack until all four gun stars are operational. 
We've had word that the Indies know we're installing new defenses, so be on your guard. I'll be on your guard. This is the engineering tug Suez calling the Dreadnoughts. Welcome to the Ross Gateway. And say hello to my boys. The last of the gun stars arrived only a few hours ago. All the stars have been placed in position and are fully set up. The only thing required now is for me to fit the arming key to them all. It should only take a few minutes. Mm. Suez out. A few minutes. Okay. Alright, right here, if you can see, I'm being sneaky and hiding behind the Lagrange point, waiting for enemy ships to come through. That'll give me a good 15 second head start on giving them damage. I only know how to do this because, like I said, I played this a buttload of times. Otherwise, I would have probably just sat there and gotten rear-ended. Which sucks. Instant explosion. We're moving on to the second gun star. you can make things safer for us. Probably a good idea. Oh, man. God. This guy in my sick, that is not fun. The weakest part on the ship is uh, the engines, because the shields don't cover them. So coming up from behind is a very good tactic. Second gun star online. Also on my ship. We're moving on to the third platform. On my ship I have uh, two shields, upper and lower. Those PATCOMs only have one. Um, each shield generator is a linear displacement array using the same, as I mentioned before, the same in-universe technology as the linear displacement system for traveling really fast. And But each one's only capable of tracking one target or one threat at a time. So if I had wingman, I could make really short work of these guys. I'll we'll fire at them from two angles and they can't block both of them. Unfortunately, I don't have a wingman. I've got this engineer ship. <coughs> position again. They're going to send through more ships. Multiple Hold it. Oh jeez, those are missiles. Nice. 
Why am I not going forward? There we go, I was pushing the wrong button, that's why. That's three online. One more to go. Yeah, convenient. You know, the behind the uh, end point again. Oh, nice. Alright, yeah, this is nowhere near as hard as I remember it being. <laughs> I'm playing in simulation mode, which is supposed to be harder, too. So. Obviously, it just really sucked when I was a kid. Although, also when I was a kid, I don't think I had the uh, lateral thruster set up to the hat switch, which is very convenient for maneuvering. This is like a super turret floating through space. Oh man, I almost collided with that guy? That would have sucked. Okay, this is not working out great. Why do I not have any weapons? Come on. Freaking give me some guns here, guys. What the hell? Starboard magazine. I am out of missiles. I can't stop. Come on, guys. Repair faster, please. This sucks. I would like to stop tumbling through space aimlessly. There we go. Luckily, the gun stars can take a lot of punishment, otherwise I would have failed this mission by now. They really should have sent me with a wingman. Oh, that's right, I have no frickin' missiles. I don't have... 
um, disruptor missiles yet. That's not fun. I don't know why nobody's shooting anyone. Dreadnought, all gun stars have been armed and are now online. Thanks for your assistance. If you don't mind, we're getting the heck out of here. Two heads out. I'm also getting the heck out of here. What the crap? So screwed right now. That sucks. <sighs> well, don't think I'm going to try that one again right now. Freaking hate that mission. I don't think a rendezvous waypoint has been laid in for Jupiter space. Proceed to that location, where you will be picking up some cargo. I'm sorry, I can't tell you more at this point. Oh, that is... This is Salt Lake STC to Dreadnought. You have been granted permission for launch. It's a little cloak and dagger. Alright, where's the nearest L point? Right there. Alright, here we go. We're going into capsule space. This is the cruiser Brazen calling Dreadnought CNV 301. Please approach. Sure. 
Sure. I'll approach. I don't know where the hatch is, so I'm gonna use autopilot. <sighs> Mostly I don't want it to take like 15 minutes for me to try docking with this thing. It is possible to manually dock with uh, other ships. It just takes a little while and a little bit of luck. Oh yeah, I totally would have failed that. They don't even have the port mark on the um, texture map. Oh well. Sir, Admiral Brett is coming aboard. Oh snap. Yet another person you guys don't know because... At ease, everyone. Captain, He's stand by to receive a new there. briefing document. Cloak this is dagger. Admiral Brett. The Commonwealth is developing a radical new class of attack ship. And we are approaching a delicate phase in that development process. The first space trials of the new ships are about to begin, and I would like to visit the test range in person to see the outcome for myself. I would like you to take me to the Navy Weapons Testing Range in Wolf 359 space. Once there, your ship will act as official observer vessel. I feel that my cruiser, Brazen, might draw a little too much attention. When we are in position, the experimental vessels will be launched and we will observe them as they engage a number of targets. Finally, we will test the maneuvering capabilities of the new ships by engaging in simulated combat with them. Uh, real quick, I'm going to give you a little overview of how this ship works, because uh, I totally skipped that. Um, right here, this is the first workstation. This is the captain's terminal. I have access to um, the docks about like the crew members and stuff, and uh, Jefferson Clay is not technically a crew member because he's not technically alive, and also the Navy is not supposed to know about him, I think, yet, because he's secret. I don't know. They never explained that, that's a plot hole. Um, ship catalog, stuff about other ships. Uh, weapons, stuff about weapons. Um, the briefing videos, the objectives list, and here's the, uh, here's the map system for this game. It's really freaking cool. Um, I click on systems. And then I can zoom in on the system somehow. There we go. Look, system view. And I can look at the planets and the stars, and I can pick a Lagrange point to go to. It's really sweet. I could just go explore if I wanted to. I, I do. I do want to, but I'm not going to because of reasons. Um, let's see. If I leave the captain's terminal, over here is weapons, which is what you saw earlier. Uh, give me this nice little padlock view. You know, I can keep a view on my target and not need to worry about the position of my ship as much. Uh, I do have a rear um, missile magazine. I just forgot how to use it. It's there though, so I actually have twice as many missiles as I did. Like I said, though, I guess I don't know how to use it. Um, let's see. We will. Here, I'm gonna stop moving. Don't go floating around here. Then uh, over here is engineering, which we've also seen. That's uh, I just drag uh, systems, drag systems to repair teams, and they repair them, as you saw. Um, also, there's this thing. Uh, allows me to 
change where my energy distribution is. I can go to more mostly shields, I can go to mostly engines and mostly weapons, and right now, you know, by default it's centered. And I can pick a, my preferred distribution. So that's neat. Um, and then uh, over here to the no, never mind. Just right to the front. That's the nav, which you've also seen. Um, has this nice little uh, 3D map thingy to show me where ships are in relation to my uh, immediate surroundings. I don't remember how big that sphere is supposed to be, but yeah, I think it's probably a couple hundred meters. And then. Uh, I've got all my autopilots and stuff over on the left there. Hello. The range point that I went way back to. I am not paying attention. Uh, personal note, when you're flying a spaceship, you should pay attention. It's generally a good idea. Alright, when going through a Lagrange point to enter capsule space, you need to be going between 200 and 400 meters per second, so... Going 229. Off to Wolf 359 with Admiral Brad. All ships, your attention. The first test will start as soon as we reach the observation point. All right, where's the Okay, take us to the observing position. Waypoint one. Let's go. Autopiloting because why not? This is the observe point. Brett to range master. Commence the target run. New fighters. We haven't seen fighters in game yet. This is Fighter Purple One. It exists. Target run now. There, you just get them on the visible areas, and they can dock to uh, the docking ports on my ship to be used as stationary turrets as well. and remote controlled, which will Captain, I'd like you to now engage in mock combat with the fighters. We'll, we'll be you know. using cannon only. Your engineer will reprogram your cannon to low intensity. We don't want anyone to get hurt. We will log hits on the dreadnought versus hits on the fighters. Oh my. Hey, they killed us. Exercise complete. The fighters won. Sir, uh, picking up a new thermal trace, not a Commonwealth ship. Must be an Indy spy ship gone cold. It's powering up and moving away. This is Brett. I want that ship intercepted now. Kestrel 1 and 2, intercept. Dreadnought, you hold position here. No. Heading for the jump point. 
The first ship was a decoy. Let's move to intercept the Corvette. Flying faster than my missiles, I probably should not have fired them. That is not a Corvette, but okay. Well done, Captain. Let's hope they didn't make any FTL transmissions. We'll terminate the tests and return to base. I'm gonna stick around and kill those other ships. Complete 70. Why? What didn't I do? Just because I didn't kill all the ships myself? Well then. The test of the fighters hardly went to plan, but it was clear that they represented a major tactical advantage for the Commonwealth. So yeah, um, anyway, the, as I was saying, the fighters can be docked to my docking ports to be used as stationary turrets on my ship, um, and they can be remote, remotely controlled, as we'll see later. There's another mission later that revisits this. Um, also, I'm sure Admiral Brett meant nothing to you, because you probably didn't watch the intro video, because I didn't show it to you. So, uh, here's your assignment. Go watch the uh, intro video on YouTube. Just Independence War um, intro video. Let me see if I can actually find it real quick. Hmm. Looking, searching. And well, you got to see combat, so I won't show you um, instant action, which is basically just, you know, Instant action. You go shoot some stuff for no reason at all. Independence war intro. Yeah, if you just Google the phrase "independence war intro," you will find um, at least two videos of it. Also, the intro for the sequel, Defiance, and the sequel to that, Edge of Chaos. So, yeah, go watch them. Or, well, watch the first. Don't watch the, the others, because they're spoilers, I guess? Oh, not really. No, they're not spoilers at all. Yeah, go watch them. All of them. They're great. Uh, very high quality for the 90s 3D animation. A little awkward now, but still pretty good. I think it was before mocap. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it quits for the night because it's uh, coming up on midnight and I'm a wuss. So, good night. Um, we shall do this again sometime.
I will play more missions and shoot more things. Um, maybe, maybe I'll go AWOL and go exploring, jump the systems that have nothing to do with anything, just because... Oh, I uh, forgot to mention, one of my favorite things about this game is the branching storyline, which uh, hasn't really uh, been made apparent yet, but there are different outcomes for each for some of the missions throughout the storyline, which lead to different endings. There are three different endings that you can arrive at by like 12 or 15 different um, variations on the storyline. It's really cool. Um, one of the... not. not the, nowhere near the first game to do, but one of the earlier um, video games to do that. The four RPGs were like a big thing. Um, yeah, so awesome. Signing off. Gonna quit this. And hope you all have a good night. Come back soon.